I recently attended a lecture at the Steinberg Gallery, which is a small art gallery in San Luis Obispo, and a gentleman named Pete Kelly talked about the um, Dunites. Now these are the Dunites, D-U-N-I-T-E-S, not the Dunites, D-O capital K-N-I-G-H-T-S. And the Dunites were named such because they inhabited an area where there were large sand dunes down in the area of Oceano and Guadalupe in southern San Luis Obispo County. And it was a very interesting manifestation of a countercultural uh, period that began in the late teens of the 20th century and proceeded into the mid to late 40s of the 20th century. And so it, it went through a period of both prosperity in the United States and also very tough economic times. And it was a connection and collection of artists, writers, and political free thinkers who created these small structures for themselves and lived what you might call sort of a foraging and gathering kind of existence in the dunes. A big portion of which was actually harvesting the Pismo clam, which was a very abundant natural resource at that location. And there was a certain little bit of, um, oh, drama, because these people were harvesting the clams, selling the clams, on the open market, the black market, you might say. There was a government regulatory effort that came in to try and regulate their activity, taking these clams informally, without license, without regulation. And it ultimately resulted in the publishing of a book called Face of the Clam in 1947, which attempted to capture the essence of the activity of all of these individuals who were living in that area and give a, an illustration of what life on the dunes was like at that time. And I think it's something that has not been studied and publicized as much as it perhaps deserved. Throughout history, there have always been utopian movements, countercultural movements, artistic enclaves, and I think this just falls within the, the general milieu of that kind of activity. Uh, this was taking place in the early 20th century. Of course, you had in Big Sur, you had Jack Kerouac, Henry Miller, other free thinkers and artists, and this was actually very nearby. And of course, then later in North Beach, you had the Beat Generation, or you know, it was generally thought of as as that kind of activity. I think this was just in the same general uh, viewpoint and, and, and attracted the same type of thinkers. You had poets, you had artists, you had political theorists, and that was in essence what was going on there at that time. This book, The Face of the Clam, which is in many ways reminiscent of Tortilla Flat by John Steinbeck, in the sense that it tried to capture the reality of what the culture was like to live in this particular time and place with these colorful characters and individuals who were pursuing this countercultural, if you will, lifestyle. It's a whimsical description of the characters that then existed in an in interesting and amusing storyline about their activities, about their daily lives, about their dodging the law enforcement efforts of the uh, game warden, uh, about their camaraderie, about their living together and sharing uh, the hardships and the joys of living in this very challenging natural, but yet beautiful natural environment.